Hey guys, Chad Trofkobin here. Welcome back yet again to the Steve in the Alien tutorial series. We are now approaching the final exterior shot for our animation. And this involves the alien laying on the ground and looking up and then being surprised that the UFO is hovering now over the van. And of course, this will all make sense once we edit the video together and put everything together. We are doing some of these things a little bit out of sequence. But trust me, it'll make sense once we get to the editing stage. So to get started, we'll need a new document. And of course, we'll need to import assets like we have been before. So let's go to File, Import, Anime Studio Object. And we need the sky so we can grab from any of these um, lessons that we've done. So I'll just grab from the Alien Shoot lesson and just grab the sky and click OK. Now I'll do the same and grab the clouds. And then we'll need the mountains. As well as the ground. And I'll probably grab the ground from one of the previous lessons, like the first shot of the van driving on the highway. Like that. And then for our last piece, we'll need the alien. So I'll just go to File, Import, Anime Studio Object, and then I will grab the alien from when we did the falling out animation, that close-up animation of him falling out of the van. And I'll just click OK. And this will bring the whole van into the project. So all we have to do is just drag the alien out of the van and then we can just remove the van entirely from the project by clicking on it, hitting the trash can icon and hitting yes. So now what we should do next because we have brought in assets from different things and as you can see it's animating out, we can just go to animation, clear animation from document and hit yes. Now there is another thing, and I mentioned this before, you could actually just put these uh, assets into your library and then drag them out when you want to like that. And I do have a lesson that talks about that online on my YouTube channel. I just thought I'd just try to streamline this and make it a little bit easier by showing you this method. Okay, so now we need to have the alien laying on the ground. And another thing we want to do is remove the gun from the alien because we want the gun laying next to the alien. So I'll just remove the gun by going into the alien and just clicking and dragging the gun out of the alien group layer. So now that is separate. We can just go like that and we can resize this. I'm not sure how big we're going to need it yet. We can go something like that. But we'll also need to remove the hand from it as well. So I can just go into that layer and find the hand and remove it. So now we have that. And we might have to flip this and reposition it, but I'll just leave it here for right now. And for the alien, I can go in now to his first hand switch and switch that on. So now he has a hand instead of just no hand since it was tied to the gun before. For the alien, we will now click on him and choose the flip horizontally layer option at the top here. And that'll flip our alien horizontally. And we can blow him up a little bit, but we'll probably use the camera mostly to zoom in. And I can now take the rotate layer tool and just move him like this as if he was laying on the ground and then bring him over like that. So now, starting at about frame one, we can position him to look, make it look like he's laying on the ground. So maybe have his hand like this and his other hand like that. And what I could do actually now, since we no longer have the gun in play, 
is I can go into that alien and make sure that his head is above this arm. So I can just find those layers that have to deal with the head, which are right here. And then we can just bring those above the arm. And of course, make sure the collar is actually below like that. Okay. So we'll have to find a way to position his arm so it looks natural. Possibly even something like this. And then we can make his legs a little bit more like that. And then we can take our camera still in frame one and click the track camera tool to make a keyframe as well as the zoom camera tool. And then I can just zoom in like this and we can see the alien now laying on the ground. And now we're simply going to have him um, look up. But we'll do a few frames here of him just laying there. And we can also click on the body now to insert some keyframes to ensure that we don't have the body moving at all before this happens. And then we're going to have him look up. So we'll have a few frames of animation up to about uh, to the two second mark dealing with this. So now we can lift his head up as well as the torso. And we can do some things with his arms like this as he's about to look up. So he is laying and then he starts to look up. And that's what we have going on here. So now we could do a couple of camera movements with this. When this happens, we could, of course, insert keyframes at the start of his animation, which I have on frame 12. And then he starts to look up. And then we can pan up as he does that. So just a slight pan. And then what I might do is do a zoom in on his face as he is shocked by what he's looking at. So to start, let's go back to frame zero and then go into the alien layer and go to the mouth switch, right click and choose closed mouth. So he's here, he looks up and then at about frame 48, he's gonna become shocked by what he sees. So we'll right click and choose open mouth and then We'll insert keyframes for the camera by just clicking here. And then we'll do a quick zoom at to about frame 60. And we can just do a zoom in like that of his face. We might even want to make the zoom in a little bit quicker. So I'll just take these from frame 60 and put them out to 54. So whoop, it zooms in. And he's scared of us to what he's seeing, basically. And if we want to, we can also go to the alien um, layer and take our manipulate bones tool and add just a little bit of movement to the head or to the body, just to kind of give a little bit of movement while he is looking like this as we zoom in. So that is something we could do as well. So he gets up, looks, and he's shocked. And one more thing I might want to do too is I might want to make the torso move up a little bit more as he's doing this and adjust the head accordingly, just so it looks like he's actually getting up a little bit more. And I can adjust the hand like this, as well as like that. And that looks a little bit better. And of course I can move the camera up accordingly to how that looks. And then we have the zoom in. And of course I'll have to adjust the torso then for this because I had that movement in there. So what I can actually do for this is I can click on the previous bone keyframes as you see right here and copy that and then paste it where I am right now and then just adjust accordingly with the movements I want to do like that. And also too, I think I want I might want to zoom up or track up a bit when I do this, like that. And 
And I can probably actually lower the arm too now that I'm looking at this. The arm probably should be more down here since he's pushing himself up. Like that. Maybe move this arm like that. So it looks like he's pushing himself up. And then we zoom in. And then we have that final uh-oh moment <clears throat> with the UFO, you know, about to suck up his friend. Okay. And that pretty much does it for this lesson. We can now reduce, of course, the frames to 72 so we don't render out any needless animation. And then we can go to File and Save, and then File Export Animation. And then from there, of course, save your video with all your required settings, and then keep the video safe so we can use it when we edit everything together. And there are a few more tweaks we could make. Actually, one I should make because I kind of forgot to do it when we started this lesson was, you'll notice that my background mountains are ahead of the foreground mountains. So all I have to do is just swap my layers like that. And finally, there's a couple other things you could do too. Like, I know there's not a lot of detail to what's going on here. Um, you could, if you wanted to animate the hands out a little bit, you could create some more hands for the switch layers and make it look like he's pushing off a little bit more than how he is right now. But other than that, if you want to do other stuff, you could add some stuff into the background and you know how to do all those tweaks I've pretty much shown you or taught you how to do or suggested you could do. All that remains the same for this lesson. So just play around with it, have fun, and try to polish it up. And that does it for me. That wraps up all of the exterior shots. Next, we'll be focusing on the interior shots. So I'll see you then.